Mariela. At what moment did you discover that you just had to be a musician? It was uh, in the in my last year of the study I did. It was a healthcare. Uh, no, it was a music therapy uh, education mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, school, and uh, I was pretty young to end uh, that education, and uh, I didn't feel that I had the responsibility to take care of people, older people or children uh, to look after so I didn't feel very comfortable in that job that I had to do in one year and then I was asked for a, an, an ensemble to go on a tour it was the Ricciotti ensemble mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think okay I can do that it will be nice to experience that to, to play in another group than the fanfare and the brass band I used to play in and we went on a tour to uh, Bosnia and it was one year after the war was just ended, so it was uh, build it up. The country was just building up, and um, they thought it was a good idea to have a music group to play for the people there. And it made such an impression on me what music can do for people, especially those people who were suffering from the war and the horrible things they uh, had experienced. And I could see how it lightened up their lives for just the hour or half an hour we were playing there. And I also experienced that playing music all day, that was just make me so happy that mm -hmm. I can... That's what I wanted, I knew it from inside, this is what I want to do all day. And we played like four concerts every day. and. When we had a spare half an hour, then we went on the street and did another concert because we wanted to play. So um, after that, I decided to uh, to do audition for the conservatorium, and I was 26 at that time. So it was a bit bit risk because I didn't have money for an extra study. So I had to work in the night and study in the, uh, the day during the day to uh, to achieve that. But I managed, and I got yeah. a job. So. Yes. Yes. And you said you played in your town band, your fanfare orchestra. Yes. And was that a big, important um, part of your growing up with music? Yes, I think so. Yes. Um, my whole family was uh, playing. My father was playing the tuba. My mother was playing the alt, alt horn. Mm -hmm. alt, alto horn. My sister was playing the saxophone. And uh, I was the youngest one, so of course I went also. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was nice to do something with the family, to, to go on the concerts and the competitions. And, mm -hmm. uh, it was nice to do something with the family. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't until you were on that tour in Bosnia that you really maybe felt a connection with the audience? It was a difference? Yes. There, uh, yes. There was... I always had the idea of the musicians that it was a bit of a selfish uh, thing to do in your life, just mm -hmm. play music and do it for yourself because you like to play music. And I didn't think of what can be for the audience, mm -hmm. that it can have a meaning, that it can touch you when you, when, when you listen to the music. Mm -hmm. And when I was there in Bosnia at one concert, there was in a, a, a area with flats and it was all shut down and broken, everything mm -hmm. broken, nothing, no green left, just just uh, rocks and, and stones. And we started to play there and nobody was there, but we just brought, started the concert because it was planned. And then suddenly, all over, there were children coming from, from dungeons and, and trees and, uh, and, and there was this little girl, she was coming on my leg and she looked at me and she stayed there for the whole concert and I could see the, 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 the touching in her eyes it can make me cry again yeah. because I could see the pain she had but I lighted up or we lighted up her eyes because we played the music and mm -hmm. it was so beautiful very powerful yeah and what's been your most uh, memorable musical experience there was, I was joining a competition 
uh, I don't know, I cannot remember when, but there were very, uh, very nice teachers, um, trumpet players, well-known, well-known trumpet players, and there was one, his name is Marco Stockhauser, he's the son of Stockhauser, and he uh, was giving a master class and uh, invited people from, from the audience to come on stage and improvise with him in a modern music way. And I thought he was a bit scary because he could do things that I couldn't do, so he was a little bit high up for me in his experience. But I dragged myself up on that stage and go there and experience. And uh, we were sitting in a circle and he asked to close our eyes. He started a line to, uh, with the playing and then we were joining in and, and individual or together or in the group and then I had a feeling that everything around us was disappearing. I had no idea of time. I, I forgot where I was. And uh, I was really into that moment and in like another dimension or something. But I wasn't realizing that at that time when I look back on it and thinking, oh, oh, something special happened. So mm -hmm. when we, we had, we had a very nice uh, fade out and then suddenly he said, Marco said, thank you. And I was, <gasps> I was just falling down on my chair again. Whoa, what happened? And it seemed that nobody of the other trumpet players had that experience, just me. So he, I looked at him and he was winking at me like, I know what happened to you and I know it, mm -hmm. but it's not the, the moment now to talk about it. But I felt that it was really special that I forgot and I didn't felt judged by the audience and I didn't judge myself. Mm -hmm. I was just into the moment and into the music. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever get that feeling uh, today when you're playing? No, no. never experienced that okay. in yeah. um, What motivates you to go back on stage today, week after week? Um, to go that experience? because it was quite special and uh, I know it's I don't know why it doesn't happen maybe I do because when you when you go for perfection mm -hmm. then it doesn't happen right but if you can lose that and let it go then then but my experience is that Most of the times you're looking for perfection and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the rest of the orchestra as well because you want to do a good job. People are coming to your concert, they pay a lot of money. Yes. So the expectation is quite high and then yeah, you go for perfection in tune, uh, a good technique mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it doesn't happen. Right. But it's nice to, to go for it and, and, and it's nice to, to play together in a group and, and mm -hmm. to play the music. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think orchestras can do better to grow and connect with their audience? What I think is, what I missed at the, at the music school, the, the conservatorium, um, is uh, how to make connection with your audience. You learn how to perfect your playing on your instrument, you learn about music, about the music history. Mm -hmm. It's very uh, valuable, it's very important to know uh, how do you play together, like timing and, and cultural, uh, um, how do you say that? The habits, the, the, the cultural, okay, yes. uh, how do you say that? The the ten <clears throat> the tendencies of musicians. I'm not sure if I'm following. Yeah, it's it's how you should play it, like. Um, right. Um, the tradition. Tradition. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And and not I missed. Uh, how do you really make connection with your audience, mm -hmm. and how do you keep it? Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to to learn and to know for orchestra that. 
important that you train yourself uh, how to interact with your public, with your with your audience. Mm -hmm. That if I think that if if you go for perfection and you stay to yourself and and keep your music here and not hand it over to your audience, mm -hmm. then it can be quite boring. And right. your attention will lose up and then you think after half an hour, oh, I have to go to the toilet. Oh, do you think the coffee will be ready soon? Yeah. And then you start to look around and, and, and oh, nice hole. And, but it's important to, to learn mm -hmm. uh, how to keep in contact. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and also um, to, uh, for the orchestra, for the leading of the orchestra, to know what's the speci specialties of each of my musicians mm -hmm. and how can I use that to make it a, um, um, uh, to take advantage of mm -hmm. all the specialities of the, the musicians you have right. and, and like if you have a, a, a good um, a wind group then you should perform more with the wind group because mm -hmm. that's the best part of your orchestra mm -hmm. and uh, make the program that you use that more mm -hmm. that's important as well and if you have a very good lead trumpet player in your group mm -hmm. then use that more right yeah mm -hmm. and if you could change something about the business of music what would you change oh, oh. sorry sorry connected to what you really want and what you like mm -hmm. and what you would like to tell to the, to the audience then it's easier to connect mm -hmm. and to have interaction yeah. now if you could have one night to play any piece of music with any orchestra or any solo or any conductor or in any concert hall what would that be for you Thanks. You're welcome.